ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्ण स्वधापगते धनमज्ञादि सह कलौ नष्टृशा पुराणाकोधुनोदिता ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत This is Canto 7, Chapter 10, and we will begin today with text number 36. And we'll proceed to text number 38, which is written on the board. I will just recite the first verses. पुनश्च विप्रशापेन राक्षसौ तौ बभूव कुंभकर्णदशग्रीव हतौ तौ राम विक्रम दैट मीन्स बीइंग कर्स्ड बाय द ब्राह्मणस द सेम टू असोसिएट्स टुक बर्थ अगेन एज कुंभकर्ण एंड द टेन हेडेड रावण These two rakshasas were killed by Lord Ramchandra's extraordinary power. The same two associates are whom? Yes. Jaya Vijaya Hiranyakashipu Hiranyaksha. Now they've become Kumbhakarna Ravana. And they were killed again. Text thirty-seven. Shayano yudhi nirbhin hridayau Rama shaya kehi tat chittau jahatur deham yatha praktana janmani. Pierced by the arrows of Lord Ramchandra, both Kumbhakarna and Ravana lay on the ground and left their bodies. fully absorbed in thought of the lord just as they had in their previous births as hiranyaksha and hiranyakashipu these two verses don't have any purport we'll move on to the next verse so please repeat tau eha atha punaha jatau शिशुपाल करूष जाओ हराओ वैर अनुबंधेन पश्यत ते समीय तहाथ पुनर्जा शिशुपालकूष जाओ हरौ वैराणुबंधेन पश्यत समीय तिहाथ पुनर्जाता शिशुपालकूष जाओ करौ वैराणुबंधेन पश्यत समीय 
ताव हाथ पुनर्जात शिशुपाल खुरुष जाओ हरौ वैराणु बंधेन पश्यत स्थे समीयत हो ताओ both of them eha in this human society atha in this way punaha again jatao took their births shishupala shishupal karusha jao dantavakra harao unto the supreme personality of godhead vaira anubandhena by the bondage of considering the lord an enemy pashyataha we're looking on te while you samiyatoho merged or went to the lotus feet of the lord translation they both took birth again in human society as shishupala and dantavakra and continued in the same enmity toward the lord it is they who merged into the body of the lord in your presence purport by his divine grace shila ac bhaktivedanta swami shila prabhupad founder and acharya of the international society for krishna consciousness savior of the modern world shila prabhupad ki vairano bandhena period <laughs> acting like the lord's enemy is also beneficial for the living entity kama dvesha bhayat snehat whether in lusty desire anger fear or envy of the lord somehow or other as recommended by shilaru goswami tasmat tasmat kenap upayena one should become attached to the supreme personality of godhead and ultimately achieve the goal of returning home back to godhead what then is to be said of one who is related to the supreme personality of godhead as a servant friend father mother or conjugal lover Om Gyana Timiranta Sigyanan Jina Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Pishtam Stapitam Yena Putale Sayam Rupa Kadama Hyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Ho Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shcha He Krishna Karuna Sintho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hare Priye Vansha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 
राम राम हरे हरे Being cursed by the Brahmins, the same two associates took birth again as Kumbhakarna and the ten-headed Ravana. These two Rakshasas were killed by Lord Ramchandra's extraordinary power. Pierced by the arrows of Lord Ramchandra, both Kumbhakarna and Ravana lay on the ground and left their bodies fully absorbed in thought of the Lord. Just as they had in their previous births as Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. They both took birth again in human society as Shishupal and Dantavakra and continued in the same enmity toward the Lord. It is they who merged into the body of the Lord in your presence. Who is speaking this verse? Narad Muni. And he's speaking to? Yudhishthir Maharaj. And this is in connection, we heard basically yesterday we heard almost everything that is stated by the Acharyas in their commentaries on uh, this passage. But some points mm, uh, are worthy of further elaboration. So the question initially was precipitated way back in chapter one. Uh, by hearing about this pastime, King Parikshit inquired, Lord Vishnu is equal to everyone, so how did he become partial for the sake of Indra and kill all of Indra's enemies? We had heard in the last canto about that. And moreover, what benefit would he derive from siding with the demigods? What interest would he fulfill? Since the Lord is transcendental, why should he fear the asuras? And how could he be envious of them? Basically, I'm doubtful about this. The Lord Narayan is supposed to be equal to everyone, so how is he able to do this? It's a long passage, as you know, but... Um, this whole story of Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha being killed by the Lord in his two incarnations, Narasimha and Varahadev, is in answer to that question, at least in this Srimad Bhagavatam. So here we are finishing the story. Sridhar Swami, in his commentary on this verse, he points out that seven verses beginning with yesterday's verse, they more or less sum up the entire narration of the previous births of these two. Uh, because someone might question, how is it that they, they these two envious, envious asuras, Shishupal and Karushaja. Karushaja is a fancy name for Dantavakra or Dantavakra. Uh, where is Karusha? Karusha province? They were neighbors. Chediraja, Shishupal, and Dantavakra, the Karusha kingdoms, Raja. Uh, Karusha's maybe in between Gaya and south of Kashi. And just to the west of that, near Bundelkhanda, is Chedi. So these two were friends, brothers, you can say, and they were equally envious also of the Lord. We're talking mainly about Jaya here. Which one is Jaya? Hiranyaksha or Hiranyakashipu? Hiranyakashipu. Also Shishupala here in his third incarnation. Now first of all the question is how can one who is killed by the Lord even take birth again? We, we hear th all throughout Srila Prabhupada's books that when someone is killed by uh, the Lord then he he, he gets liberation, even if he's a demon. So how is it that they didn't get that? Twice they didn't get it. It was mentioned yesterday. Who was listening? Nobody knows?
Anyway, there are many reasons for this, actually. There are many reasons for this. But the reason given in Vishnu Purana, as cited by Srirup Goswami uh, in his Lagu Bhagavatamritam, is that just as you can equally burn down a house if you have a small candle or if you have a large blazing torch, both of them are sufficient to light a house on fire and burn it down. So in the same way, the potency of all the Lord's incarnations are the same. But on a cold night or a cold morning like today, only a bonfire will do to warm you up. So in the same way, Krishna and Narasimha and Varaha Dev and Ramchandra and all the Lord's incarnations they all have the same potency, but they don't display the same potency. And you can only get liberation when you are killed by Krishna. This is what Vishnu Purana says, according to Srila Rupa Goswami in his Lagu Bhagavatamritam. That's an important point. So, another thing is this, that when Hiranyakashipu died, he had no idea what had killed him, really. He had no idea what this creature was. Nobody had ever seen this form before. Half man, half lion. So, and when he died, he was completely confused. He was, by nature, very passionate, as the demons always are. And the characteristics of passion given in Bhagavad Gita include that one is clouded, one's intelligence is confused. This is the strength of desire. That's why we have to control our desires, because we can't think straight unless we do. So he had very strong desires and he was confused about who this creature was. He just assumed it was some greatly fortunate being who by dint of good karma was able to fight with him because really nobody else even could try that. Even gods shied away from angering Hiranyakashipu. So he was killed like this. Because he died in the mode of passion and still in ignorance, uh, he took birth again. The result according to, uh, is it Mahanarayana Upanishad? No. It's from some other Shruti Mantra as quoted by the Acharyas. The result of being killed by Vishnu is not necessarily that you get liberation, but you always get uh, excessive sense gratification equal to life in Swargaloka. So this is what Ravana got. He was killed by Narasimhadev uh, in his previous birth, and then in his next birth he took birth as Ravana, and he had unrivaled sovereignty and opulence. Everyone bowed at his feet. Even gods bowed at his feet. So, but he remained passionate. And the, the English word passion is nice in this connection. Rajoguna. Raja, Raja actually means dust. <laughs> when you get dust in your eyes, you cannot see straight. So this is the effect of the mode of passion. So he could not see because of his lust. This time, he made the fatal mistake of lusting after the supreme goddess of fortune herself, Bhumi Devi, in the form of Sita Devi, Lakshmi Devi. That was, that was like reaching into the mouth of a hungry lion to try to pull out one of its teeth, <laughs> according to Valmiki Ramayana. So, he was again killed for this offense. And Prabhupada comments in this connection in the ninth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, just see what happens if you mistreat a chaste lady. This is the effect. Just as the brahmacharis, they get great teja, great potency, by controlling their semen through brahmacharya. So similarly, the women, they get great potency through chastity. It's equivalent for them, because we're different. So, 
Anyway, he, he had offended the supreme goddess of fortune and he had f thereby offended all the devotees who follow her. There's a whole sampradaya of devotees who revere her above all others. Actually, we're another form of the same thing. We worship Lakshmi not as Lakshmi per se, but we worship Jayashri. Jayashri means that form of Lakshmi who conquers even Lakshmi herself. What is that form of Lakshmi who conquers Lakshmi herself? Srimati Radharani. So, <clears throat> then he was killed again by Ramchandra, as here it's described, he, both he and uh, Kumbhakarna, their hearts were split by the arrows of Ramchandra. And, this is a significant point here, which I'm getting at. In that consciousness, or in consciousness of him, he died again. And again, he got unrivaled opulence as the king of Chedis, Shishupal. This time, he knew that he had been killed twice before by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This time he harbored hatred toward the Lord, excess, exceedingly uh, hateful towards the Lord, envious. And so much so that he was constantly meditating on Krishna and constantly vilifying Krishna. By that process he was chanting Krishna's holy names all the time. He could not get Krishna out of his mind. Rupa Goswami says, explains in this connection, the reason that this is so is because Krishna has a special potency that no other forms of the Lord have, according to Vishnu Purana. Vishnu Purana, by the way, is the supreme scripture for the Sri Vaishnavas, in the same way that Srimad Bhagavatam is the supreme evidence of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas and the uh, Vallabhacharya uh, followers also all over North India. Uh, devotees tend to revere the Srimad Bhagavatam more than any other scripture. So the words of Vishnu Purana are very authoritative for everyone. And they say this. When he was thinking, hearing and chanting about Krishna, by his innate charm and beauty and by the innate potency of his holy name, Krishna has a way to insinuate himself into the hearts of all living entities in such a way that they, they cannot resist his attraction. That's why he's called Krishna, the all-attractive Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Shishupal was not aware of it because he had still some mundane conception of the Supreme Lord, but by the strength of chanting the holy names and meditating on Krishna's beautiful form, he was gradually being purified in a way that he wasn't purified in his past two births. That is the significance of these words, yata praktana janmani. And the acharyas, particularly Viraragava Acharya of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya and Vijayadvaj Tirtha of the Madhva Sampradaya, they both recognized this uh, implicitly by words such as purva janmani yata Tathetiva. Hiranja Kashipur Harinya Hiranyakshakyaha Purva Janmani Yatha Tathetiva. Just as in their previous as in the previous verses, Hiranyaksha, uh, so as uh, Ravana Kumbhakarna, they, they died in the same way. But the third time as Shishupal Dantavakra, they were very fortunate, particularly Shishupal, because he in particular was chanting the Lord's name in this way. So when he was, when his, when his Agnata Sukriti, you might say, has reached a critical mass after so many times blaspheming Lord Krishna, we know from Mahabharata, Shishupal had been given a benediction that you can blaspheme Krishna or a curse as, as you want, as you look at it. Um, you can blaspheme Krishna only 100 times after that finished. So Krishna is just calmly counting that the, all, the, all of Krishna's associates, they were holding on to their swords and just itching to slice him on the, uh, on the spot. And Krishna was restraining them, and Krishna said nothing, while Shishupal continues to, with calumny after calumny, just blaspheming the Lord 
in, in this public assembly, even. <laughs> Vairano Bandhena, Vaira. Vaira means envy. <laughs> Those who are from Tamil Nadu, you may know. The famous poet, his name is Vaira Mutu. <laughs> in Tamil, it means diamond, <laughs> diamond pearl. But uh, we can see it another way. <laughs> He, he's been in the news recently because he, he considered he was making some derogatory remarks regarding the great uh, Alwar, Goda Devi, Andal. And the Sri Vaishnavas are all up in arms about that. Actually, I was in Shiviliputur recently and I actually saw in the temple there, there are many devotees are seated and doing kirtan and fasting because they are so offended by this suggestion. He said she was a Devadasi. Devadasi, as you know, is a kind of a, you know, it can mean two things, put it that way. So, anyway, Vairano Bandhena. Uh, he still had his envy and he was still chanting Krishna's names out of hatred. And uh, by way of blasphemy, you, you necessarily have to chant Krishna's names if you want to criticize him. But by the special potency of Krishna's names, he was being purified and he didn't know that. And right at the very last moment when he uttered his 100th offense, then at that time Krishna took out his Sudarshan chakra and sent it towards his neck. As the effulgence of that chakra was approaching his neck to slice it off, he at that point only realized that this is my eternal Lord and Master. I don't actually hate this person. He is my most beloved deity. And, of course, his head was sliced off at that point. This is, as they say, every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> so, Sayujya then. What does Sayujya mean? It's very interesting that Sridhar Swami, in his commentary on this verse, he says, out of such envy, how is it that, that someone can get Sri Krishna Sayujya? Sri Krishna Sayujya. So, we hear the general, the general narrative is that uh, Shishupal, after his soul left the body, minus its head, he circumambulated Lord Krishna and then entered Lord Krishna. That is called Sayujya Mukti, when you enter the Lord. But actually, according to Mahanarayana Upanishad, uh, the word Sayujya has another meaning as well. Sayujya in the sense of Saha Yoga, union with the Lord close connection. Just as another word that is misused by the Advaita Vadis, Maya Vadis in particular. Kevala Advaita. Kaivalya. Kaivalya means oneness, but actually Kaivalya also means you have nothing in your heart except for one thing and that is Krishna. So like the gopis, Kunti Devi also, therefore she prays to the Lord as Kaivalya Pataye Namaha. Kaivalyapati, Lord of, Lord of those who are one with your interest. This is the point. So this is another version. Uh, and she, it's, it's notable here that in his purport, Srila Prabhupada accommodates both. He says, Samiyatuhu, this is the word that they gloss, meaning uh, merged with the Lord. Prabhupada says it means merged or went into the lotus feet of the Lord. Either one. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also prays to become a particle of dust at the lotus feet of the Lord. This is Vaishnava Sayujya. There are, there are many different kinds of Sayujya Mukti, in fact. They're des it's described in different ways. Madhvacharya interprets Sayujya Mukti to mean that you are so much attuned to the Lord's purpose that your senses are empowered to act on behalf of the Lord. It's kind of like what we call Avesha, Avesha incarnation. So that's at least three definitions of Sayujya. Either way you look at it, it would be surprising to an ordinary person to consider that such a demon can get uh, liberation of any sort. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada is quoting here in his uh, own purport, that way back in chapter 1, the significant verses about this, which I'll just reiterate quickly. Kamat dveshat bhayat snehat. 
यथा भक्तेश भक्तेश्वरे मनः आवेश तद अघम हित्वा बहवस तद गतिम गता That means many, many persons have attained liberation simply by thinking of Krishna with great attention and giving up sinful activities. This great attention may be due to lusty desires, inimical feelings, fear, affection, or devotional service. So how many ways? Those who are listening carefully. Lust or uh, envy or fear or affection or bhakti. These are five ways that you can attain liberation simply by thinking of Krishna with great attention and giving up sinful activities. That's an important thing. Generally a demon is not able to give up sinful activities. So, dveshat, then he goes on to the next verse. Gopya kamas. The gopis, they attain this through kama, or what appears to be kama. Srila Prabhupada carefully explains it in his purport. And kamsa bhayat. Kamsa ab- attain the same mukti. How? Bhayat, out of fear. You remember from Krishna book. He was constantly wondering, when is he going to come? <laughs> Anticipating. Uh, Chaidya. Dveshat, the Shishupal out of envy. That's what we're talking about today. Adayo Narpaha and many others. Sambandhat, Vrishnayaha. The Vrishnis or the Vrishavasis, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur points out, they attain this through some sort of relation, relationship. And Snehat as well. The Vrishavasis in particular, out of affection. Uh, Nanda Yashoda, Srila Prabhupada writes, they had this sneha for Lord Krishna. Yuyam bhaktya vayam vibho. And you, Narad Muni? By bhakti. Narad Muni attained by bhakti. That's the difference in case you were wondering between sneha and bhakti. It would seem that sneha implies ragatmika bhakti, whereas uh, but the word bhakti alone is used for the vaidhi bhakti process that Narad Muni personified or perfected. So in these ways, uh, one can get perfection even through what appears to be uh, inimical, unfavorable bhakti. The point is this. Katamo pinam venasyat panchamam purusham prati tasmat kenap yupayena manaha krishne neveshayet. This is what Prabhupada is quoting in his purport today. Somehow or other, another way it's sometimes quoted also, yena kena prakarena manaha krishna neveshayet, Rupa Goswami tells us. Somehow or other, one must consider the form of Krishna very seriously. Then by one of the five different processes mentioned above, one cannot return home back to Godhead. Atheists like King Vena, however, being unable to think of Krishna's forms in any of these five ways, cannot attain salvation. Therefore, one must somehow think of Krishna, whether in a friendly way or inimically. Now, Vijay Dwaj Tirta brings up an interesting point about this as well in his commentary. He says, although they attain sayujya, uh, vayanu bantena, uh, by envying the Lord, not every asura can do this. Because we said already, most asuras are sinful. Most of them are not sufficiently intense in their envy. <laughs> Shishupala's envy was as intense as only a Vaikuntha Nivasi's attention can be. You see? And we heard yesterday that it actually was desired by both the Lord and Jaya Vijaya that they should spend some time in the material world performing this pastime. How could we discuss it this morning had they not made that choice? So, he quotes a verse that Srila Prabhupada also quotes, although not in connection with today's verse. Srila Prabhupada quotes this verse as text 22 of this chapter, which I will read. (laughs) 
he attributes this quote to Madhva Muni. Madhu kaita bhau bhakti abhavad, durao bhagavato mratao, tama eva kramad abtao, bhaktiat ched yo harim yayao. So he quotes it in a different context and he doesn't translate it, but basically the idea is that because Madhu and Gaitaba, for example, just like Veena, another example, they didn't really have Bhakti Bhava there and they, they died therefore very, very far away from Krishna. And what did they get for it? Tama Eva, only more ignorance. This is the general destination of someone whose envy or hatred of the Lord is not sufficiently comparable to that of Shishupal. He just, he only gets more tama. Tama means ignorance. Bhaktyaced yo harim yayao. But the Chediraj, Shishupal, he had sufficient bhakti. Therefore he attained Lord Hari. So these are a few things we can think about in regards to this verse. Um, now, today also happens to be the disappear, uh, appearance day of Srila Narutam Das Thakur, great Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharya, and probably, well not probably, he was certainly uh, Srila Prabhupada's famous poet, if we accept the idea that Srila Prabhupada uh, preferred this bhajan. Manusha Janama Paya Radha Krishna Nabhajaya Janiya uh, Shunya Bishukhainu. Actually, I was looking to see the, where Prabhupada quotes Narottam Das Thakur throughout his books. Mostly he's quoting this verse, and he's also quoting another famous verse of Narottam Das Thakur from another one of his songs. Tantere Charana Sevi Bhakta Sangevas. And he quotes, what's another one? Jnana Karma Kanda Jnana Kanda Kevala Vishair Bandha. The karma khanda and the jnana khanda are just like pots of poison in the devotee's attitude, these ideas. Srila Prabhupada was so fond of Narottam Das Thakur because <coughs> although his songs are in very simple Bengali, easy to understand language, but the depth of what he says is incomparable, practically speaking, compared to any other poet in any other language. The, the expertise with which Narottam Das Thakur takes Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta and makes it accessible to a, to a pedestrian in, in the vernacular language is amazing. So he says, he, and the attitudes that he expresses as well, what the, what the content of his bhajans are. That this is this is not to be found, practically speaking, in other places, or at least by very few other poets. Hari Hari Bipali Janama Gainu. I've uselessly wasted this life. Manusha Janama Paiya Radha Krishna Nabhajiya Janiya Shunya Bishakainu. He's consistent with himself when he says, although I've got this human form of life, I've not worshipped Radha Krishna, therefore I've deliberately, knowingly, I've drunk poison. Goloker prema dhana hari nama sankirtana rati nad janmilo kenetai. Although this hari nama sankirtana is coming from the spiritual world, I, I never developed any attraction for it. Sangsara bishanale dibanishi hiyad jale. My heart is being scorched day and night by the flames of this uh, poisonous material world. Judaiti na kainu upai. I don't see any means of uh, resolving this. But Brajendra Nandana J Shachi Sutta Hoido She Bularam Hoido Nitai. This Brajendra Nandana Shri Krishna, he has come in the form of Shachi Sutta, and Bularam has become Nitai. Dina Hina Jata Chilo Harinama Uddharilo Tara Sakhi Jagai Madhai. He is, they're delivering those people who are fallen, those people who are bereft of any means, and they are doing so through Harinam. And the witness to this is Jagai Madhai. So we've come full circle, because we know, we've heard yesterday also, Jagai Madhai, they're none other than Jai Vijaya, 
at least in this particular case that we're discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam. So they, they were the worst sinners and they were reformed by uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through chanting the holy names. And uh, we can also become delivered even though we're also Dina Hina Jata Chilo, etc. This is the encouragement. Ha ha Prabhunanda Sutta Vrishapano Sutta Juta Koruna Korohai Baro Narottama Dasa Koi Natheli Horangapai Toma Bina Kea Chiamar. O Lord Krishna, son of Ananda, accompanied by the daughter of Rishapanu, please be merciful to me now. Narottam Das Thakur says, please do not push me away from your reddish lotus feet, for who is my beloved other than you? So that's one very, very valuable song. We know we sing so many songs by Narottam Das Thakur. Goranga bolite hobe pulaka sharir, hari hari bolite nayane bhave nir. Who can think like this? what to speak of actually living this way. And another line, Pashane kutibo matha nale pashibo gauranga gunera nithi kotha gele pavo. Where shall I go in order to get gauranga, the reservoir of all wonderful spiritual qualities? He feels such separation that he's prepared to smash his head against the rock. He's ready to enter into fire. Raise your hand if you're ready to do this. So this is Narottam Das Thakur. We can take advantage of his association through his words because they're so powerful, incomparably powerful. I think uh, it's, it's indicated, the value of his writing is indicated by the fact that Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has also said in one of his Sanskrit prayers that the words of Narottam Das Thakur, they are not different from Vedic mantras. They're not really any different. Th their effect is the same. They have that potency of the Vedic mantras. In fact, he, he actually himself, he wrote a Sanskrit commentary on the, one of the songs of Narottam Das Thakur. The one we sing every day. Srila Prabhupada saw fit for us to sing this song every day at Guru Puja. This is also Narottam Das Thakur. Sri Guru Charana Padma. The spiritual master is like a lotus flower. That means that we're all like the bees who take shelter of the lotus flower. Sri Sri Guru Gauranga Ki Jai. Sri Sri Krishna Balarama Ki Jai. Sri Sri Lalit Avishaka Sahataradha Shyam Sundara. KJ. Sri Guru Charana. He says he's using the word Charana out of respect, like Swami Charana. Okay. Anyway, we can go on and on. The, 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 great, the greatness of Narottam Das Thakur is eternally available to us in the form of his songs. And we know that the style of Vaishnava Kirtan that we do, Paravali Kirtan, is also his invention. So many things we can say about Narottam Das Thakur, but the time is ending. So I think I should stop now. But if anybody has any questions or any comments, we can maybe discuss one or two. Yes, Prabhuji. Thanks. Hare Krishna. Did you ask this question yesterday? <laughs> Someone did. Any, any other questions about this? Okay. No other questions. Yes, Mataji. Yes, the three that I'm aware of. Yes, and uh, <coughs> two of them, I understand that the jiva is empty and he gave it on the behalf of the Lord or taking shelter of the Lord's feet of the Lord. But the 
that it's actually merging how it saves the personality, how it behaves, how it's empty. I'm not sure I understand your question. If the GY is actually merging mm. the body of the Lord, how it saves the personality and what is the Jiva's act? Because Jiva cannot not act, so how does it mean? Yeah, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. We eternally exist as Jivas. Srila Prabhupada very often points out that actually this so-called Sayuja Mukti, it actually cannot really exist. What you, what you may do is merge into the Brahma Jyoti. And even in that case, it's, since it's a hypothetical, hypothetical situation to begin with, you most likely are not going to remain there. It's like taking an airplane and not landing again. You, you would drive most of us crazy. So really that kind of Sayuja Mukti is neither is it encouraged because it's non-devotional, but it's not even really possible because we're, we have desires, we have individuality, we want to do things, we're active. So that kind of Mukti is more or less, it's hypothetical. That, that classic sort of Sayuji Mukti that Srila Prabhupada tends to emphasize, maybe because the Mayavadis do as well. Is that okay? Generally, devotee is not neither inclined nor disinclined towards any kind of liberation. A devotee rather sees everything with respect to devotional service. And so if it's favorable for devotional service, a devotee may reject any kind of liberation, including the Vaishnava liberations. But if it is favorable for, de for devotional service, a devotee may accept them as well. This is the transcendental position of a devotee. He sees everything the same, but with respect to devotional service only. That's why he doesn't want to entertain any prospect in which there's no possibility of devotional service. This mindset in which we've merged which is more or less hallucinatory, Prabhupada also says elsewhere. It's completely repulsive to a devotee, and it's completely antithetical to bhakti because of its non-devotional nature. When we, when we try to turn away from Krishna, ishad apeta, then we either suffer the threefold miseries of material existence as a result of our foolish actions, or we suffer the frustration as a result of cultivating non-devotional gyan. But both of them are, are hellish as far as a pure devotee is concerned. That's our perspective. Is that okay? Anything else? Somebody else raise their hand, yes. He thought it was George Sebolier. <laughs> George Sebolier. So you explained in your class about Vaira, Awake to Attain Krishna, the demons. And this, is, this is not Admoni's opinion. Vaira as a way to attain Krishna. I was wondering the other forms, which are equally powerful as you say. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't grant liberation to. Bhaya, Sneha, Bhakti, Vaira, or Dvesha, he says. What is the other one? Kama. Kama, yes. There are other forms of Krishna like Holy Buddha. Mm. Uh, do they grant, um, you know, the ultimate, you know, keeping aside the, the, the other ways, and they just work, plus the other one, and I guess like, so when it comes to the other realm, she can take something, you know, do, they, do the other forms also, are they able to grant? Krishna, Krishna, re Krishna reveals himself in complete uh, reciprocation with our approach. If we are approaching Krishna with the intention of that Krishna is going to liberate me, whether we're conscious of that or not, then that's probably what he's going to do. <laughs> because he knows better than we know what we want. This is something worth meditating on for a while. And so, by that logic, if we're approaching Krishna also, say we want infinite facilities, then Krishna will supply us with infinite facilities. 
but not forever. <laughs> if you want eternal life, that's really only available in pure devotional service in the spiritual world. But, you know, we say that uh, demons cannot come back from Vaikuntha. This question has been raised as well. Demons who go to Vaikuntha, nobody who goes to Vaikuntha can come back. This is the idea. But they can come back if they desire to. And this was the case with Jaya Vijaya. They, they are, they, nobody falls from Vaikuntha, but if they choose to go, actually this is the case with all of us. <laughs> It's our choice. It's not, a, it's not a function of being influenced by some extrinsic potency. There is no Mahamaya in the spiritual world, but there's always this choice. This is the point. So Krishna reciprocates with our choice, always. What about the point of entry from the and the of You can study these purports to um, this uh, chapter 1 text, uh, right around text 27, 28, and 29, 30, which we've quoted already, but Prabhupada elaborates in those purports, uh, this, this question, uh, particularly about envy and also Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and others in their commentaries on it. They, they discuss the, the problems with trying to cultivate envy as a way to, uh, of reaching Krishna. <laughs> It's, it's not advisable because, you know, we, d we don't have the magnitude of attention required and, and demonstrated by uh, Shishupal and others. Is that okay? Short answer. Anything else? If not, then we should end now. Thank you very much. All glory to Srila Prabhupada.